Hello and welcome to the first video lecture on the topic of compound stresses and strains. Now in the previous uh, topics that we studied about stress and strains, we were dealing with either a pure normal or direct stress, either in tension or compression, or a pure shear stress. Okay, So either we had a pure compression or tension, or we had a pure shearing. But in most of the cases, we have both direct stresses and shear stresses. This means both of them are acting at one single plane at a particular instant of time. For example, if you look at this section, on this section, you have tau also and you have sigma also. Now due to both of these, you will have a resultant stress acting across this plane. Now let us say sigma is your direct stress, tau is your shear stress, then sigma r would be your resultant stress. Now sigma r can be you know given to be uh, under root of sigma square plus tau square with the help of Pythagoras theorem and phi is the angle which is between the normal to the plane and the resultant uh, stress axis. and this can be founded by tan inverse of tau upon sigma. In this chapter, we would be going through these six topics. You would be studying a body subjected to simple tension, a body subjected to pure shear, then you will have pure normal stresses, you will have generalized 2D uh, stress system, you will be talking about principal planes and then we will be talking about the Mohr's stress circle. Now point one and two will be discussed in this video lecture, that is video lecture one on this topic. Uh, topic three, four and five would be discussed in the video lecture number two of the uh, chapter. And number six would be discussed in the last video lecture. Starting with the first topic that is a body in simple tension. Now you have a bar, let us say this is the bar that uh, in question, this is the bar in question, this is any section of the bar, along its length, its length, it is being subjected to a direct tensile stress sigma. Now across any transverse section, that is a section like AB, the stress would be only sigma, okay, but what if at an oblique section AC. Now across this you will have again two components that is sigma uh, tau theta and then one will be perpendicular that is sigma theta. This means when we talk about oblique planes, on oblique planes you have a stress which is acting along the plane and a stress which is acting perpendicular to the plane. Now due to these two stresses acting simultaneously, you would have a resultant stress that comes into picture. Now if you redraw this section over here, you have A, B and C. And AC being the oblique plane, uh, across this plane, along this plane, you have a stress tau theta and perpendicular to this plane you have stress sigma theta. Let us say the complete, uh, uh, you just create it in the form of an element, let us say the bar thickness is T, so this thickness would also be T. Okay. So what is the force on the body? Force on the body is stress into area. So if I have to find the stress in the perpendicular direction, this would be stress into area. Area is how much? Thickness into AC. So this would be AC into T. And what would be the stress along the plane? That would be stress AC into the same area because this is a shear stress and shear stress always acts along the surface. So you have to take the surface area. Now there is one more stress which is acting and this stress is a sigma. Now sigma is perpendicular to this plane. So the force acting on this plane is stress that is sigma into 
the area of the plane which is AB into T. So these are the three forces which are acting on this element.